What's going on, team? Kestiva back here with your midweek mini for you. So today we have to find deflection um, of our member. So this one's a great one. Um, this pops up a lot in real life, um, in professional practice. So let's jump right in. All right, so find the deflection at the end of the hollow rectangular section shown. Outside dimensions of the sec section is 12 by 12 inches, and the thickness is a quarter inch. The Young's modulus of steel is 29 times 10 to the 6th PSI. All right, and for our member, we have a 10-foot span, as denoted here. We have a uniform load of 200 pounds per lineal foot, denoted here. And we have an 800-pound point load at the end of our cantilever. So we have that cantilevered member. And over here, we have the cross-section of our member. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is... And I know I say it a lot, but we're going to whip out our handy-dandy steel construction manual. Mine's the 14th edition, although I now have a PDF version of the 15th blue edition. But we're just going to rock and roll with the 14th edition still. So what you need to do in order to find deflection is flip open to table 3-23 in your steel manual. Um, this can be found on page 3-219. And what you need to do is break down the loading criteria into two separate uh, loading analysis. So we have number one, we have a cantilevered member with just distributed load with 200 PLF. And then our second member, or our second analysis, going to be the same thing, cantilevered member, only this time just the point load at the end of 800 pounds. Now, the reason we do this is because we have shear moment and deflection equations in our steel manual um, that cover not this perfect scenario here, but we do have, if we break down into two separate scenarios, we do have equations given to us for both these two scenarios. So um, we will find them separately. We'll find deflections for both scenarios, and then we'll just add those deflections together to get you your sum of total deflection of the member. So that's how you go about this. All right, number one. For a distributed load on a cantilevered member, the deflection max criteria is equal to WL to the fourth over 8EI. For number two, for a point load at the end of a cantilever, max deflection equation is given by PL cubed over 3 EI. So again, this isn't stuff that you're trying to remember in this exam. You know, this is, um, these are equations given to you in your steel manual. You want to know that you can always flip to this. Table 3-23, I can't stress this enough, was my go-to main source of information for the PE structural specific exam. Just want to point that out. Really use it. Don't try to memorize. Know where to go and find the information. And from these, so let's break down. W is our loading criteria, which is 200 PLF. Well, we actually want to break that into pounds per lineal inch. So we need to divide that by 12, which gets us 16.67 pounds per lineal inch, PLI, because we want to break everything down the only thing that can trip you up with deflection is, is having inconsistent units. So PLI, we're going to use pounds and inches. L, we know is the span. So that's 10 feet. So 10 feet, we said we're going to use inches. So we need to multiply by 12. That's 120 inches. 8 is a constant. E was given to us up above Young's modulus of steel. It's 29 times 10 to the 6th. PSI. All right, so that's pounds and inches. So we're fine there. And then we need I, moment of inertia that we don't know yet. Um, for our other equation, we have P equaling 800 pounds. Pounds is good. Good there. L, same thing. 10 feet, which equals 120 inches. 3 is just a constant. E 29 times 10 to the 6th, PSI, PSI, again, we're good there with our units, 
And then we need our moment of inertia again, which is question mark. So the moment of inertia for both is the same because it's the same member. And now we're going to come back to find our I, and we're going to use this cross section that they gave us. Now, I'm going to scroll down here. We know that moment of inertia for a square or a rectangle equals B D cubed over 12. You know, if you had a rectangle like this, that's your B and that's your D. Well, we, you're going to say, well, wait a minute, we have something really strange here. Not strange, but we have an HSS section, so a hollow rectangular section like this. And you're like, well, how are we supposed to quickly figure that out? That's got to be some weird, crazy equation. Well, actually, just think about it. We can do this um, through engineering judgment and just find I for the exterior of the member. Um, so the extents, so just like we said. And then we can subtract. And actually, what I'll do is this. I'll draw green on the inside. We can subtract out the eye of the smaller shape on the inside, and that will give you your effective moment of inertia. So let's start with the big one first. We scroll up. It's 12 by 12. Okay, so B, so 12 inches, 12 inches. I'm going to go over here now. B equals 12 inches, and D equals 12 inches. So for our red B, so our outer box, we know we have B of 12 and a D of 12. So I, we'll call it out, equals 12 times 12 cubed over 12. Wow, that's repetitive. OK, well, those two 12s can go away. So that equals 1728 inches to the fourth. Now we'll switch up colors here. Now we want I in which equals, if we scroll back up, we see that we have a thickness of 0 0.25 inches. So that means that our B, nope, let's back this up quick, so keep you guys on track. That means our B is equal to 11.5 inches, and our D is also equal to 11.5 inches. So our I in it's going to equal 11.5 times 11.5 to the third over 12. That gets us 1457.5 inches to the fourth. And now, if we bring these together and subtract them, that gets us I effective equal to 270. 0.4 inches to the fourth. All right. So that means we can go back up, and we now know our last variables. All right. So let's plug everything in now. I'm going to switch back to red from here on out. So for equation one, which is WL to the fourth over 8 EI, that's going to be 16.67 PLI times 120 inches to the fourth. Add that to equation two, which is PL cubed over three EI, which breaks down in two. And that gets you, let's do it this way. Equation number one, all that jazz gets us 0 0.055 inches. And equation number two gets us 0 0.055 eight, seven inches. If we add those together, we get the summation of deflection, or our total deflection of our member. And that's going to equal 0 0.114 inches. And that is our answer. Let's scroll back up to the top, see what we got. 0 0.115 inches is answer A. That's a lot closer than any of the rest. We're going to take that one little decimal point off and assume that that's our answer. So that'll do it for us for today. Um, oh, one thing I didn't mention, in case you're wondering, is in order, so for this member here to find your moment of inertia, if 
for your effective moment of inertia, that equation can be found in table, so AISC, that's steel manual, um, table 17-27. Um, it gives you an equation for hollow rectangles, which, uh, boom, that's what we got. So head there in your steel manual. Um, you don't need to remember that off the top of your head. That's actually in the back of the book. So really, really helpful. It's like the back last pages. Um, always some nice nuggets in there for you, but in case anyone was wondering where that kind of just popped up from. And that'll do it for today. Um, I know this one took a little bit longer, and you may be asking yourself, well, is this something that I could actually theoretically see on the exam? And for those who are not taking the structural specific um, PE exam, I would say that most likely you won't see something this in-depth in the um, morning breath of the exam. Uh, the it would be this type of equation or question would be reduced down significantly and be, would, would be made a lot easier for you to do. Um, but for those taking the structural specific um, afternoon portion of the exam where it's all structural intensive, I would say that very likely you would see something comparable to this. Um, although they average you to have six minutes per problem, you know, I was going step by step explaining things through, so it took a little longer. But for you, after you're done studying and hopefully, you know, gaining this knowledge through these videos, you could freaking cook right through this thing. You're just flying through. You know you got to split up your equations. You know you got to go to your steel manual or another comparable uh, manual to get your deflection criteria equations. You know your effective I is just the, the difference in the rectangles. And then you're just boop, bing, bop, knocking out, getting your total deflection. So should move pretty quickly. It seems like there's a lot, but actually they provide you with most things that are difficult to find. So um, don't think that this is something way out of line to see in the exam. I think it's something that you would see and you should be able to, you know, snag this one, get that free problem when you see it. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, you know, like I say it all the time, as always, like, subscribe, tell more friends, tell more family, tell more coworkers, people you're studying with, um, it just, it helps the channel grow. It helps people learn more, which is, you know, the point of all of this, right? Um, some big news is that uh, I've just started a Facebook page uh, for Kesteva Engineering and, and Learning. So that is out there in the wild in the Facebook world. Um, I've joined a lot of, you know, structural specific and civil um, engineering specific groups, um, hoping to spread my knowledge that way and answer any questions I can via that social platform. So, you know, if you're a member of Facebook, jump on, try to find me. It's just Kesteva. Um, same logo, looks exactly like the YouTube page. And, you know, let's talk there. Let's go through some problems. Let's let's work on what you're struggling with and let's help more people learn and, you know, bring more problems and more know-how that you have that maybe I don't know yet um, so that I can grow as well. You know, that's the point, again, um, of all of this is to help both myself and everyone that's watching grow as engineers, become more competent, and just have a more successful career and a, more, a lot more fun career. So, all right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.